Topic of today's video, something maybe you do or don't care about college hockey. I don't know what I'm doing for next year. Option one would be to stick with VIU. I've already put in one year of time, so typically year two things get a little bit better. A couple variables come into play there, which I'll talk about in a second. Option two would be to leave the team and try to find a different university or college to transfer to. Option three would be to try out for a semi-pro team, go to a free agent camp, whether that be in Europe or North America, somewhere in the southern states, or even in Toronto this upcoming summer. Option number four would be the worst of all the options, playing with senior hockey in Manitoba. It's been probably the toughest season of hockey I've had in my life. Every time I go to the rink from the second I leave my house to the second I get back later that night, whether it be a practice, game, social event. I felt like a job where I'd punch in and punch out in the time clock. Yeah, they're a good deal. This is like 50 bucks. Well, I'm in Victoria today because I'm helping one of the guys on my team with a video project. That's him right there. One, two, three. He wants to be a photographer. One thing people don't talk about a lot when it comes to college hockey, totally different from junior hockey. There is no, you can leave, see you later, I'll go somewhere else later this season. You got school tied into everything. Once you sign and you're committed, there is no leaving for that year. So you're putting all your eggs in one basket. As mentioned before, there's a lot of variables coming into place. So for example, you have to be enrolled in school, which is Easily one of the biggest barriers and biggest hurdles to jump through at this point in time. Hey, it's my friend. Hey. You have to have the right amount of credit hours and the right amount of courses to be eligible to play on a hockey team. You have to find a program that's an actual fit for you. A program where you're not gonna be sitting as the fourth guy for the next five years. Finding a place where you have the opportunity to play and to succeed and actually be seen by a lot of people. The most stressful part of all of it, cold call a coach or a GM, or you send off an email, you start talking, you get a little bit of a lead, and then uh, maybe things aren't gonna work out, they found a different guy. That trail goes cold, you start again, and it gets to a point where you start running out of teams. However, what's the point of sticking in a program if you hate it? Another part people don't understand is the actual involvement and the feeling of being on a team. In college, if you're the third, fourth, or even the fifth guy in some teams, you have zero involvement in the team's success. You don't contribute in games, you have almost no influence in practice whatsoever. The guys in the locker don't care about what you have to say. It's another very interesting fast that does not get talked about a lot. Now, I know you're probably looking for more information. Want me to tell you a little bit more about where do you want to play? Where are you going to go? There's a lot of parts of the process that are frowned upon if you're sharing that publicly. Like, for example, I have a lead with this team or this university. A lot of teams like to stay politically correct. Although it may seem like common knowledge to you and I, they don't like sharing it. So you got to keep it quiet. At the end of the day, you got to respect that and you got to do what the uh, do with coaches and management or whoever wants you to do. So I will see you on the other side of these. Do you want water? Yeah, I'd love some water. Silent swap, you can quench your thirst anytime. I have a little inside secret to tell you now. There's a keg at the Sideline Swap headquarters. You tell me this place isn't fun. Go to sidelineswap.com. I'll see you next week.